Hey! My name is Amber B. Courtney and the video you are about to watch is about Rolando Chang Barrero. Rolando is a South Florida artist known for thought-provoking paintings based off of things like social justice, political reform, social commentary, etc, etc. If you don't know anything about South Florida, you should know that the art scene here is pretty prominent. From graffiti to painting to dance, art is everywhere here and Rolando is no exception to being a contributor to that. Um, I hope you enjoy watching it. I certainly enjoyed making it and there'll also be some more information at the end of the video so make sure you stay tuned for that. But for now, enjoy. Rolando Chang Barrero is a Cuban-born artist in South Florida. Known for his provocative pieces focusing on social issues, Barrero's new exhibition was shown in his own art gallery during the Palm Beach County Open Studios event. Barrero has had an adventurous career and life. He has worked all over the US. He has also survived brain cancer and overcome an addiction to drugs and alcohol. 13 years ago, while in the midst of his addiction, he left South Beach and moved to West Palm. According to him, he hasn't stopped creating since. And just retired. And uh, was overworking uh, over the real estate market, over the art gallery thing, and everything. Uh, so I moved up here, got clean, got sober, and couldn't put the brush down. When he first opened his gallery, Barrero made the conscious decision to never feature his own work. He chose not to have what he calls a vanity gallery. I don't want to take the opportunity away from another artist who may not have a brick and mortar space like I do. Uh, so I seldomly show my work here. Uh, this is not a vanity gallery, which, does anybody know what a vanity gallery is? No. Vanity gallery is when an artist opens up his own gallery to showcase his own work. And there's nothing wrong with that, uh, but that's not what this is. This is actually a curated space to show emerging works uh, with a concentration on social justice art. However, for this very special event, he chose to feature his own work instead. Barrero is known for his political and provocative pieces. However, no matter how political his pieces are, he always makes a note to mention that his art is nonpartisan. Being openly gay um, and Hispanic, um, I, I'm exposed to a lot of different issues that are going on. So I try to create exhibitions that make people reflect on their, their values when they see it. And it's a fine line between when you're dealing with hot topics um, to not turn it into propaganda. To produce work that makes them think, not that tells them how to think. Um, that engages them in their head, not necessarily in the dialogue between me and you, but between you by yourself. According to him, the goal of his work is to make other people question their own opinions, never to push his own. What I find propaganda is creating work that tells you how to think. And I don't want to be that person. I think that if you come up with your response, then you are actually more, more apt to stick with your convictions. One of his most well-known pieces was placed right in the middle of his exhibition. Um, like I have a big body bag um, that has written on it, this is a body bag, not a school supply. And you get to experience that however you want. You know, and what happens when you when you put two of them together? What happens when you fill up a whole room full of them? What's the impact when you see a lot of them? And then you tell and then the thing says, please measure your child for the right size, preschool, grade school or high school. And you have three different size body bags. This 
piece was done as a result of the Parkland uh, shootings. And nothing happened. And still nothing has happened. This piece was produced in 2016, 2017. Um, and it made the news and everything. It was exhibited then in Fat Village, where it made international news. And then two months ago, uh, two or three months ago, during the Wade shootings, the same reporter got in touch with me and did another interview. Um, and I was heartbroken having to admit that I was creating a document of a place and time. And that I always figured it was not saleable because nobody wants to have a body bag in the dining room framed. Um, and that it would just go disappear. But unfortunately, it has become a timeless piece. Um, that every day becomes important uh, still. Rolando's work has always centered around social justice. One of the reasons he even began making art was to show support for his friends who were victims of the AIDS crisis in the 1980s. I went into kind of a depression because it was the AIDS crisis and we were very involved in doing a lot of uh, social justice work back then. My friends weren't reclaimed by their families. They had kicked, been kicked out, many of them disenfranchised. So when they passed away, nobody could claim the bodies. So they were cremated and disposed of. In fact, empathy was a driving inspiration behind him creating his famous Pajaro Bird. And then the bird was born, the Pajaro which is my logo. I don't know if you, if, did you see that little bird? Because uh, it was a derogatory for gay in Spanish. Pajaro mean like fairy. Uh, so I made little wood cutouts as epitaphs. I wanted to keep their memory alive. And so I made those and wrote epitaphs for each one of them. And then people kept sending me more epitaphs. <laughs> now his famous birds which are used in many of his art pieces and almost all of his merchandise, are symbolic of all of those in the queer community who were disowned or felt like they didn't belong. And the birds have become a way of um, getting a bird back into everybody's house. Kind of like my kind of tongue in cheek, you kicked us out and I'm gonna put us right back in your home. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've made it really cute and, and people say, oh my God, that's so nice. And I'm laughing. I'm like, yeah, it's going back in your house. <laughs> this, this is a, uh, like a big, uh, to all the, all the haters who got rid of their kids uh, for being pajaros. Uh, so I was like, yes, in their memory, I'm putting one in your house. <laughs> uh, so everything I do has, has, a, has a reason, you know? Two years ago, I was invited to do a, a project for the Mexican consulate's office in Miami, and it was going to be the first time to have a, a gay person show in their art gallery, and that was like, well, it's gay pride, it's not, you know, it's LGBT pride month, and it's for everybody, not just for one gay Hispanic man. So I came up with a project uh, where I cut out my bird, which is my, my symbol, and I handed it out to a number of different community people, uh, whether they were black, white, Asians, gay, straight, trans, bi, allies, uh, to be totally inclusive because that's what pride is about. It's about pride in our community, pride in being a one united group of people. Given that a majority of his pieces are done in the name of justice, one thing that makes his art stand out is that empathy plays a major factor in what he creates. Um, and since I knew what it was like um, to die in dishonor or in, in the effects of hate uh, and not being looked at as part of, of a population, but as dispensable part of a population, uh, because of being gay, uh, then I've always had a, a sensitivity towards people and towards social justice. So a lot of my work tends to go that way. Despite all the positivity he intends to bring with his work, 
Being an activist is a dangerous job. Milk. Uh, anybody know who Harvey Milk is? <laughs> Why don't you share who Harvey Milk is? Um, San Francisco. He was a councilman or was a mayor. 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 Yeah, one of the first high profile elected officials that happened to be from the uh, LGBT community, uh, who consequently met the, the end um, according to the times. He was killed. Um, and just like that, a lot of people throughout history that have been the voice of certain communities, certain uh, protected communities, get killed. Murdered. Uh, so, lest we forget, uh, and I'll that. Rolando says he is aware that he could be risking his safety by creating his art. A great thing about him is that he is not afraid. I get death threats all the time. How do you deal with that? I am on, I, I'm on direct contact text messaging the chief of police. Every time I get it, I copy, paste it, and send it to him. Uh, only Not because I think that they're going to follow through, but in case they ever decide to follow through, there's a, a record of premeditation. With art that discusses many grim topics of reality, it may feel like trying to save the world is hopeless. Rolando says that he does believe that art has the ability to save the world if not by changing the people in it, then by inspiring others to act. So my very, very deep question to you is, do you really honestly, truly believe that your art and just art in general has the ability to change all of this? To change, to inspire hope, to change? I think so. I, I think that if nothing else, um within the experience of the work i may motivate you to go and vote and it's the vote that matters most what it comes down to is we still have the right to vote and depending on how you respond to whatever you write about this or whatever you experience at the gallery if it gets you angry if it gets you happy um if it moves you one way or the other and if you think you can't make a difference i'm here to tell you that you can but make sure you vote with your consciousness with your heart and and aware of the issues and and know that you're not alone then that your vote really does count it's the end of this video hope you guys liked it um i certainly put a lot of work into it so i hope that's evident and i hope you guys enjoyed watching it if you want any information on rolando um the gallery that this video was filmed at um i think he is moving from it but if you want more information on him his work his social media etc etc by all means please look at it i will have his information in the description box below and i also wanted to give a really really big shout out to miss danielle um thanks to her actually sending me some of the videos she took i was able to complete this one um so a lot of the clips you see in this video were actually taken by her and she allowed me to use them miss danielle is the founder of the jonathan white foundation which is the foundation she created in order to promote stopping gun violence which is something that's very near and dear and personal to me the information in the link to the jonathan white foundation will be linked below as well um thank you guys for watching i really hope you enjoyed it um again i enjoyed making it it was a lot of fun and by the way make sure you like subscribe and follow and do all of the things that i guess youtubers say to do or something and just do it i guess <laughs> i'd appreciate it thank you and by all means keep it pimping <laughs>